Now, the second stage is the stage of the lower world. So you have the womb, and then you have the childhood. Now, there's some interesting things before that just about the womb. There's many verses in the Quran, like 23, 12, and 4, uh, 22, verse 5, which deal with the phenomenon of the womb. And one of the, uh, there's a, a embryologist by the name of Keith Moore who wrote uh, one of the dominant textbooks for embryology. It's used, I don't know if it is now, but it was a few years ago at UCLA's medical school. Uh, and he wrote in, in the introduction that there was no embryological knowledge uh, before, I think it was maybe the 17th or 18th century, whatsoever. And there was no detailed knowledge until the 20th century with the advent of, of uh, a lot of the technology that's enabled us to look. I mean, now we've seen the miracle of life, right? You can watch the whole thing happen. And there's a Yemeni scholar, uh, Abdul Majid Zindani, who, who read this and, and wrote him a letter saying, you know, you're wrong, that in the seventh century there's very detailed embryological information. And Keith Moore actually uh, ended up going to Yemen and meeting with this man and being shown all of these verses and rewrote his introduction to his textbook. And there's some videos of his presentations about that in which he admitted that the detailed information in the Quran is the earliest uh, example of accurate uh, scientific information about uh, the embryological stages. And somebody asked him if it was possible for the Prophet to have known that, and he said that unless he had uh, uh, microscopic information and, and was able to go in and actually see these, because uh, it says in the 22.5, uh, Oh, humanity, if you're in doubt concerning this resurrection, then know that we created you from dust, and then from the drop of a seed, nutfa. Now, nutfa is a really interesting because these are not good uh, translations. Uh, nutfa, there is a verse in the Quran which says uh, that, that, that the man had a ta'ala in lam yikun shay'an madkura inna kharaqna insan min nutfatin amshaj. We created the human being from a nutfa, and then it says amshaj. This, in classical uh, Arabic exegesis, was always problematic because nutfa is a singular feminine form. And the adjective that's used to describe it is a plural. And you can't do that in Arabic grammar. So it was always considered problematic. But the word amshaj means, the, the, the message is this intermingling of lots of uh, things. So the idea is that we created you from this seed that has an intermingling of many things. Amshaj. And from that nutfa, we made you an alaqa. This is the next stage. The, the word in Arabic alaqa means a leech-like. Now what happens with the zygote when it's inseminated, right, it gets inseminated, the sperm goes up. And there's a very interesting hadith of the Prophet in that they asked him, how are males and females determined? Because the, 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 uh, the Arabs had a lot of superstitions about how, you know, there's, they still do this. Arab women will say, you know, uh, uh, lie on your left side or, you know, they've got all these funny things that they're supposed to do if they want a boy or a girl, and, right? And, uh, and they actually believe positions influence that, sexual positions. <laughs> So he was asked, how 
What determines the male or the female? And he said, The female and the male water race. This is in Sahih Muslim. He said, the female and the male water race. And the one that gets there first will determine whether the, uh, the child is a male or a female. Which is important for a number of reasons because women were often blamed uh, in classical Arabic tradition for having, not producing males. It was considered something was wrong with the woman, right? And so that indicates, you know, the X and the Y chromosome, that you have the male and the female water. And water is also used in the Quran in many verses uh, that are now interpreted to be the genetic material. We feed them all from the same water, but we vary them with that water. And ma means sperm as well in Arabic. Ma'ul insan, man's water is his sperm. So the, the alaqa means a clinging thing. So when the zygote comes down, it literally clings to the side of the womb and it will embed itself in the womb and actually will, will break down to, to cling into the womb. So, and then it begins the, to derive its uh, nourishment from uh, the embryonic uh, sac. And then it talks about being in the three veils of darkness. Uh, in the Quran, which Keith Moore identified as these, uh, the three layers within the womb. And then it says, and then from a lump of flesh, it says mudra, and mudra is a chewed lump of flesh. And when the, when the if you see it on the, that, that first uh, period, it looks like a chewed morsel. It looks, if, if an Arab was told to describe what that was, he would say mudra. Even though it's still microscopic, it's a chewed lump of flesh. It looks like somebody, literally it looks like teeth marks where, where the, uh, where the uh, spinal cord is forming in that initial period. It looks like teeth marks. Somebody literally bit into it. And then it says shapely and shapeless because part of it has started to shape and other parts are still left unformed. So you can see this in, at the embryonic level, you can see that some of it is shaping and others still have no shape. And then it says that we may make it clear to you. That's why this is being told. In other words, it's saying if you're in doubt about what we're doing, look at this in order for it to be made clear to you. And, and we will, and then we cause what we will to remain in the wombs for an appointed time. So inside the womb, this, there is an ajal in the womb as well. So this is a life. There's an evolution that happens in the womb. And some of it will not reach its ajal in the same way as this. There could be a spontaneous abortion. There could be an abortion uh, that's willed or an accident. 